What was it? What was it like when it, you were living in Valencia at the time of the cable station? When I was a teenager, there was no electricity in Valencia. There was no road electrification, so the cable station had its own power. And all the houses in the cable station that you see, all twenty four of them, all had their own electricity generated by the cable station itself. When I was working, uh, living here, there was twenty four people working in the cable station at the end when it closed in nineteen sixty six. They had their own electricity, like I've just said. They had janitors to bring them their newspapers. They had their own carpenters for every house. And way back then, when there was no refuse collection anywhere in Kerry, there was refuse collection in the cable station. So a very special place. Um, what was, what can you describe to me, how what the feeling was like around it? It was a very, very um, wealthy feeling. Uh, everybody worked there. There were white collar workers. So it was everybody that lived in Valencia. It was their ambition to try and get a job in the cable station. They all had their own boats um, moored out in front of the cable station. And they worked three shifts from um, 10 at night till 6 in the morning. 6 in the morning till 2 o'clock in the day and 2 to 10. And I remember as a young boy seeing um, <clears throat> one of the telegraphers going on duty at 10 o'clock of a summer's night, all dressed up with a suit and tie. He had his company house and he had his boat moved out on the cable station, in front of the cable station, and I was real jealous and hoped that one day that I could get a job there. But unfortunately, when I was ready to go to work, the cable station closed. But how old were you exactly when the cable station closed? I was... 20, just 20 <clears throat> when it closed. So my grandfather worked in the cable station, um, retired in 1935, and he had a pension of £6 a month uh, from the cable station. And it was not index linked, which means that when he died in 1962, many years later, it was still £6 a month. So really the pension... Really didn't change at all? No. No, it didn't change. And they didn't make the change until long after the cable station had left. It was 1971. They made a change where it was index linked. So there was a percentage added on to your pension every year. So it was in Valencia. Uh, at one stage, there was 200 people employed on it, giving great support to the local economy. And as you probably know, every job... Like that supports another three to four jobs. And in Valencia, they supplied uh, vegetables, they supplied turf, they supplied coal, and they supplied all the needs of the cable station buildings. And they brought the oil in for the, for the generators to generate, generate electricity. Um, so you must, you, you mustn't have been very lucky when, once it closed down. When you were around 20? No, very unlucky. Particularly when I was envious of the st lifestyle they had in the cable station. And as you probably know, one of their most famous employees was Mick O'Connell, the great Kerry footballer. And Mick worked there for about 10 years from the time he left college in 1956 to the close in 1966. They also uh, helped to build the Catholic Church in Icetown. And the reason they did that because to help their... their um, their employees, all of a sudden in the morning, at that time there was no cars to go back to Chapel Town. The only uh, church on the island, um, Catholic church in the island then, was in Chapel Town. So they helped to build this church in Knightstown to support their employees. Another question? Um, I don't really ha can think of one right now, but... Can you tell me a story about what it was like there? Yeah, it was uh, all there was. It was where all uh, messages came through, particularly in the first fifty years from eighteen sixty six to nineteen twenty one. Um, the SOS and the messages from the sinking Titanic came through the cable station in Valencia, and the messages from the sinking Lusitania off of Cork also came through Valencia. 
In fact, there was two bodies picked up and buried here in the Valencia graveyard. Um, the first uh, guy to run the cable station in Valencia was a guy called James Graves. He came to Valencia with his family in 1865 and retired in 1909 uh, at the age of 77 and is buried in Valencia. <clears throat> and ever since, his family are connected with Valencia. Uh, they have houses here down through the years. And one of the Graves family played 16 times for Ireland in rugby back in the 1930s, a guy called Robbie Graves. It must have fe- felt special after you heard that, just knowing um, a famous Irish rugby player w- had connections to Valencia. Yeah, um, we had the greatest footballer of all times uh, and a rugby player that played for the Lions and played for Ireland back in the 1930s. We also had one guy called Bateman. His father was a superintendent of the Cape Station and he was a, a bomber pilot during the last World War and he got a victory cross. He was shot down over France and killed and he was born and raised and went to school here in Valencia. I think it's only just gone over six minutes. All right. You could edit